to be on the lines. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, today I'm working on the Outlander coloring book again and I'm covering the final part of the first page in the book, the bed and breakfast that is known to all of the readers or show watchers as Mrs. Baird's and I'm co covering the whole lower section, the street, the sidewalk, those water puddles here and of course the car that Frank and Claire arrived in in this lovely highland scenery of Inverness. I will tell you all about why I choose certain colors why I worked with another medium here as well, added something, and how to work with the rain uh, puddles, the, the water puddles that uh, give you a bit of mirror stuff going on. So I'm gonna work on that. This will finish this uh, page here. Tomorrow on the blog post, all the pencils, all the numbers that I use, all the material and tons and tons and tons of close-up photos of this page here will be on my blog so hop on over if you want to see and uh, next week I'm gonna come back with uh, more of the teaching uh, episodes. We're gonna look at a specific color and how to uh, work with the color, not have the drawing look flat, but still use, using only one color. So join me next week and uh, thank you for watching. So let's hop right into the video. All right, folks, I'm back and it's time to color the car. The car of Frank and Claire that they arrived in at Mrs. Baird's in Inverness in Scotland. And um, I want to use the same colors that I used for the door and maybe make it even a tiny bit darker. Because in, in the TV show, and I'm staying super close to the color schemes that stars used in their uh, episodes of Outlander, it's a burgundy car that... Well, you can only see it in the right light that it's burgundy. It almost looks black. So I want to stay super dark, super dark, super dark with <laughs> my colors. And I'm going to use, no, the other one, this one, those colors with black for the, uh, the car and, um, black and silver, uh, not silver, gray, cold grays for like uh, the metal parts of the car. So I'm gonna color it uh, in and um, only since, again, reminder from the last show, uh, the light is here. So only this section here is in sunlight or it, it's hit by light. The rest is pretty much in shadow, which means I have to work pretty dark. And uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start coloring. And I'm gonna zoom you in a bit because Otherwise, you can't really see anything. All right, that's better, right? So I'm gonna block in where my lights are. There's a tiny bit of a light up here with the lightest red. And the rest is pretty much darks, so I can put that pencil to the side. I'm hardly going to use it anymore.
All right, now I do have the main color uh, for the car in. It's, by the way, red, violet, and the Caput Mortuum Violet. And now I'm going in with uh, the brown and the black to, for one, darken up uh, the color of the car and also get the interior design uh, colored. Okay, at this point the car looks pretty ugly with those lines, does it not? But um, let me show you what the magic of the paint thinner even does to these kinds of layers. And I'm gonna go in with a bigger brush first and uh, smooth out that part here. By moving it in circles you break up those lines that you had or that I had before or I could also go in and enhance the lines just by the way I move my brush here. Now I have to move to the smaller brush otherwise I cannot get into these small sections here. Pretty amazing stuff that um, that paint thinner, right? It, it's it makes coloring in a fashion that you can only see so much of the lines in the end way easier. Of course, you cannot go super wild, still can't, but it smooths out your uh, pencil lines enough for you to have a nicely colored um, surface in the end. So now let's go in for the silver stuff. I might have to enhance a bit um, of the silver parts here, maybe, I'm not sure yet. Hmm. Actually, I might get away with it. Uh, the interior, I need to do that before I go on to the to the bumper. So I chose the same brown for the interior that I also used uh, on the outside of the car to tone the purple down a bit, which again the the brain recognizes colors that you use it looks uh, it may not know the uh, color by name but it um, makes things look way more smooth and harmonic and you can use that to your advantage by uh, using the same colors over and over again at, at some layers to just achieve the harmonic look and to well, enhance the pleasing feel to the eye. Also, you don't have to have 15,000 colors. You just need 50 and you're good to go for any painting and drawing what you want to, that you ever want to do in the world. All right, so I got the major part of the car colored. Now I need to have the wheels and uh, enhance some of the, um, the contrasts. Now for the wheels, they did have light silver and white in the 1940s. So I'm going to start off with the light section. Have some shading going on because again, this is the shadow side. This uh, is hit by light uh, from the right side. So there's uh, not much of a highlight on the left hand side 
and then I go in with the darkest gray for the wheels and shade them with black. I never or I hardly ever go in with black for the for any wheels first because there's nothing darker than black. So and even even these section needs uh, shading so it would be rather difficult then to uh, shade the wheels and they would make the whole drawing or painting look flat so I always have another color underneath a either a, a, either a very dark gray or a black or something uh, not a black, a blue or a violet or something that is dark but not as dark as I'm going to have the black when it uh, comes to shading those sections. Now I don't have to be super clean with uh, my coloring here because I'm going to use the same colors for the asphalt the street and uh, thus I can get away if I'm not staying within the lines but color beyond the lines pun intended alrighty let's give the darkest sections here I'm going in pretty heavy with the pigment so a heavy hand with the black And again, this is the ugly stage of that piece of the drawing. It will come together. Promised. Now, what do I need? I need to color the front of the car, like the plate. Let's give it a light coat with a rather heavy hand and then go in with a tiny bit of a darker color, but only a bit. have that smoothed out right away. Alrighty, so there's the car. Um, I will very likely add some uh, white gel pen or something gouache maybe in the end at this reflection here but uh, that will only happen once I have the whole drawing completed otherwise I, if I add it now it might be too much in the end and I might not like it so I wait for these kinds of uh, highlights and things to mess with until I'm done with the whole drawing so now what does the time say? Oh, we got some time to um, color in the um, the wall here and uh, maybe anything but the puddles. Let's see. I'm half an hour into the footage. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna start coloring or I'm just gonna end, uh, finish that drawing here today and you have to endure a bit of a longer video. Who knows? So I want to have uh, cold grays but uh, for that while I'm, I'm going to add 
a bit of a brown here because I want to set this apart from the sidewalk and the street and there's tiny little pieces of grass here that I want to color in the end and I think that this wall does was actually built like with Mrs. Bad's house together and not necessarily by the um, officials with with the uh, with the street or something. So I'm going in with what brown am I gonna take this one here or no 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 not the brown. Let's take one of the greens that I also used in the hill. Makes it more of a shabby uh, chic kind of a look. Um, and uh, some brown grays. Yeah, that looks fitting. Maybe a bit more of a lighter one as well. Yeah, these are the colors that I'm going to use for the wall and I have to slide that in for this wall here. One thing I have to do right away, otherwise uh, otherwise I might forget it, is have the darkest shadows on. So again, the light source is here. So this section of the wall will be super dark. Also, the lamp will cast a bit of a shadow, not much, but a bit of a shadow here. And then I'm gonna smooth that all out with a layer of the mid grays, pretty much. Now to finish that up, bit of that green, some places, just to indicate that those stones are not there uh, only for a short while, but they've been there a bit longer, you know? Pretty old. All right. Again, paint thinner. It's paint thinner time. It goes back and forth all the time. Now it's time to color the sidewalk and the street. We or I do have puddles of water here from rain and there's a bit of mirroring going on like you can see here's uh, the top of that plant here and here is a reflection of the door and here is a reflection of the window so what I'm gonna do is uh, take um, a color of each of those things that are mirrored so I'm not going to take all of the colors and uh, pull them into that puddle, but the red for the door, the green for the plant, and the cream color for the curtains. And I'm going to color it and then layer grays and a bit of blues on top to um, set aside the uh, puddles of water here from the asphalt underneath. I'm planning to have that line here be white in the end together with some highlights at the car but I'm not gonna regard that line for now. 
I can always go over that in the end with either gouache or I don't know some other white color maybe um, uh, I don't think that the uh, gel pen will work but I guess the gouache will work here so I'm going to do that later I'm gonna disregard that for now I'm just gonna start coloring and have lots of uh, cool grays up to black uh, for the whole scene here. Now that that is enough already and uh, now I'm just gonna go in I need a few of the warm grays to mimic the house. A bit of the greens that I have for the hill. Just a tiny bit to pull it in and have a bit more of an earthy look. All right, and a uh, bit of blue all over it. And then uh, after, oh, on top of these puddles, I'm gonna go pretty heavy with the cold grays so that it looks like uh, water puddles, pretty much. So let's go with a color for the street first. That should be paints gray. And black will be for the street and for the sidewalks I have an array of other colors. Let's go with the sidewalk first. And I'm going medium heavy handed here. Uh, I don't have to be very careful with where I lay out the color. I just need to have enough of the pigment in the right spot to be able to uh, blend it together with a paint thinner in the end. Before I color the street here, I will give those puddles of rain a very light-handed coat of the darkest gray. And now I'm going in with a lighter gray just to make sure that I'm not gonna lose all of the rain colors like the um, the mirroring effect uh, of the puddles of water. After that, now it's time to give the street a coat of paints gray and black. Now the last thing that I'm gonna do is set highlights and I'm trying the um, white pencil of the Polychromos first. Let's see how much I can pull in. Especially at the rain. I'm going really with a heavy hand here. It's not gonna be enough for the real high highlights. So I'm going in with gouache, which I have to find first. I have put it where it doesn't belong, but here it is. Just to make sure that I have a nice surface to paint on. So this is like an opaque watercolor. I'm gonna use a bit of that white for the high highlights. Can have it straight out of the tube. And it really makes things pop. 
and a tiny bit goes a very, very long way. So now the only thing left to do is have that line in the middle of the street be white. I'm really gonna go slow and apply gouache on that very thin line making sure that I stay as straight as possible. If I would have used uh, wax pencils, wax based pencils, I could have used my gel pen and already be done with it, but gel pen does not really work on oil based pencils. Doesn't want to stick. That's that's enough already just needed a bit of a blast there and now I can go in and cover up the parts that I don't need of the gouache so that in the end I have um, maybe a straighter line not that bumpy kind of a thing that I just had just a bit, bit of a trick here. You can always color with pencils on gouache. It's no problem to go back. So I would use that to your advantage. Right, so now I'm gonna check that's way better and I'm gonna darken some of the shadows and probably not go over them with the paint thinner just having some shadows going on underneath the car darken them up now the only thing left to do is color in the grass and I'm going to take the lighter green that I also used in the pots and just color those few blades of grass here And that's that. That is my drawing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching along over the last couple of episodes of Beyond the Lines to see. And I hope you you um, maybe learned something or took uh, a tip or two away from my just natural way of coloring things on how to build a whole scenery, have depth have a certain emotion be conveyed a certain age in time stuff like that and how to work with the colors to achieve what you want to achieve um, and maybe you learn that uh, it's always a good idea to know what you want to convey where your light source is and stuff before you start coloring so one thing I'm going to do now is getting all of the pencils that I used. It's quite a bit. But this is also, also a very big drawing. Oh, lots of details. Okay, one hand does not fit. <laughs> oh, what? <wow. laughs> I wish you could see what I'm doing off to the side. It's like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm losing all of my pencils. I need definitely need to hand. Hold it, hold it. Oh no, there's one the wrong way around. There we go. Now I got it. So these are all of the pencils that I used. You can see I need two hands as well as paint thinner and a bit of gouache. Um, yeah, the, the, all these colors are in that drawing and they, I think they bring the thing together. I hope you enjoyed. Next week I'm gonna be back with uh, one of the smaller books and I'm going to focus on one color and uh, show you how to convey depth and uh, distance and stuff by while using cold and warm 
colors of the of the uh, well cold and cold and warm tones of the same color and um uh, what to do with it what what you can maybe get out of that color that is at first glance maybe not that obvious so i hope you'll tune in next week again i hope you enjoyed this one let me know if you by any chance colored the same uh page or the same drawing with me i'd i'd love to see your photos i'd love to see what you came up with what what you wanted to use when it came to certain color tones or just what your mind did i'd love to see that uh, also i would love for you to give this video a thumbs up or share it with your friends even do both and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel because it really helps and I'm uh, gonna have videos for you every day of the week some art videos and some board game videos and sometimes it's a combination of both so have a lovely lovely day enjoy have fun and uh, take good care everybody bye